Yeah. They average 115.4 yards a game. We'll see. Yeah. Do a package deal. We will send you James Houston, and you send us Miles Garrett, and we'll send you a first a first round pick as well. And welcome to the Gridiron, guys. We have my co-host here, Donnie Cleary, and we also have Bucky from Man Hour. Uh, this is a collaborative show, so talk about it, Buck. Who is Man Hour, and where do we subscribe? Yeah, so my name is uh, Buck. Uh, I am on. I am the host of Man Hour NFL Talk. We are live every Monday through Friday at 1.30 East Coast time over here at Facebook.com forward slash Man Hour, and of course, YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour as well. And you can also, if you're in the Indiana area, Jeffersonville, Indiana, you can check us out on Big X 96.1 uh, Sports Radio here on the uh, local FM dial. So that is Man Hour. We are NFL Talk, and my name is Michael Buckkeister. So nice to meet you guys. Yeah, I'm Darcy Mavell with uh, Detroit Lions News Show, and this is Donnie Cleary. We have a collaborative show. We're going to talk about a whole slot of things. The NFL, who's the best team in the NFL, Bucks, obviously a Kansas City fan. If you could see that in his background, uh, if you uh, subscribe to his channel, he will tell you that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning two-time Super Bowl champions, are the best team still in the NFL. So, Donnie, what do you think about that take? Oh, the eye test. Uh, Kansas City, they've been through some real battles and wars, and they've won a bunch of close games, but... The way that the Lions are beating teams, uh, specifically by double digits, it's got the whole world's attention, man. We've got people in the media like Stephen A. Smith. they just riding our coattails now. They're loving us. Uh, I think it's a matter of time for the Chiefs to lose. Man, I'm not going to say it was luck Sunday, but it was luck. Bucky, what do you think about that? You were saying it before the show, it wasn't luck. It's it's all coaching. You're a coach. You're a high school coach. Very successful one. Talk about it, brother. I'm gonna yeah, get so, the uh, so if you watch ESPN or Fox Sports Net or anything just like that, they have been pointing out that the left tackle has been exposed. Right, the very first field goal attempt, he was ran. He was ran over. The second PAT attempt, he was ran over. The third one, he was ran over. So when it was nut crunch time, when it was time to do to do their thing, right? The simple fact of the of the matter is the Kansas City Chiefs knew where the weakness was. They exposed it, they ran over it, and they ultimately blocked that kick. Now, of course, blocking everything in the NFL is luck, right? It's luck that I can throw a dime past 46 yards to Amrod untouched, right? Uh, and then, like, it is pure luck if Coop, la la la, I could cup, catches that one-handed pass on, like, on Monday night. The simple fact of the matter is, is the Kansas City Chiefs are the best team in the NFL week after week, year after year, and Super Bowl after Super Bowl because they find new ways to win. If you look at the Detroit Lions, yes, they are blowing out teams. Uh, they beat the Packers 24 to 14. They beat the Titans 52 to 14. They they beat the Vikings by two, 31 to 28 9. Although they did dominate that game. Don't let the score 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 for you. But the Kansas City Chiefs, they are battle tested. They've been there. So when it's nut crunch time, when it is time to be in the playoffs and you aren't playing these easy ass teams, let's just be honest. The Titans are terrible. Cowboys terrible. The Vikings overrated. Titans terrible, right? The Kansas City Chiefs, they're battle-tested. They know how to win these closed games. What is going to happen when it is a closed game for the Detroit Lions when they're playing, let's say, the San Francisco 49ers in the wild card round? Or, sorry, not the wild card round, because they're going to get first, first seed, be the divisional round. What is going to happen? Are they going to nut up, or are they going to shit, shit the bit? That, that is the real question, and that's why the Kansas City Chiefs are the best team. It's because of coaching. They're not dumb. Dan Campbell makes all these uncalculated risks. Why are you going for it on fourth and down on the very first drive of the game on your own 30? Punt the ball away, play a, play an a, another down. That's why the Detroit Lions are the number two team in my NFL power ranking spoiler alert. 
I want to do a big shout out. We are live to the Villain Squad. It's almost 60K. We are live to the Detroit Lions News Podcast. We're also live to uh, Man Hours page and his YouTube page. Please subscribe for more content. Now, uh, do you remember, Buck, do you remember the first game of the season last here we go. year? Oh, here we go. Do I sound like a Packer fan? No, you 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 sound like a Raider fan. Do you guys remember Christmas Day 285 days ago when the Raiders beat the Chiefs? I mean, like, yes, the Detroit Lions beat the Kansas City Chiefs opening day 2023. Guys, what, what year is this? I'm asking for a friend. Is it 2024? It's 2024, yes. Okay. Uh, was opening day of 2023 day 500 and some odd days ago? Uh, not that many, but it would be about uh, 410 or something like that. Okay. Uh, was the Kansas City Chiefs without Travis Kelsey that game? Yes. And did the Lions barely squeak by? Well, we beat you, didn't you? Didn't we? Did you barely squeak, 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 squeak? A win is a win is a win is a win. <laughs> so... Where are you trying to go with this opening day? Well, because uh, my friend, a former Lion, Mark Schmidt, uh, put me at 50-yard line two years ago for the game of the year in Buffalo against those Minnesota Vikings, right? That's a tough place to play, and you guys are going there this weekend. Do you think, in your professional opinion, as being a head football coach for a high school team, do you think you walk into can or into um, – Buffalo and beat those vaunted Buffalo Bills. Uh, so in my preview of this NFL season back in June or July, I actually had the Kansas City Chiefs losing to the Buffalo Bills. And I and the following week, I had them losing to the Carolina Panthers as well. Spoiler alert, I actually had them losing, was it week three, I think it was, to the or sorry, week four to the Atlanta Falcons as well. I did not expect the Kansas City Chiefs to be 9-0 at this point. And it would be a blessing in disguise if they go into Buffalo, New York, and they get beat. They they ultimately just get slaughtered, lose by 10, 15, 20 points. It would be a blessing in, the, like in, in these guys because you do not want to be 16-0 and have that 17-0 in the back of your head. Chiefs have a pretty easy schedule moving forward. So I, I do think they will lose. As a Chiefs fan, I do think they will go into Buffalo. I think they will lose, and I think the Buffalo Bills Mafia is like, we are the best team in the NFL, which they're very, very good. Don't get it, don't get it yeah. twisted, but they will lose this weekend. I think they're better. I think they're better this year than they were last year. Who, the Buffalo Bills or the Chiefs? Yeah, the Bills. The Bills? No, the Bills. I think the Bills. I, I, I just don't, you know, you see it on social media with the uh, – yeah. the Chiefs, you know, this – the refs and this play, and they point out, you guys – Got a lot of calls not called at the end of the game. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, versus the Broncos? Against everybody. Uh, every, on social media, every Monday I look, and I'm like, oh. And I see this play. He's like, pass interference and no call, no call. Why is it that you guys are like the new Green Bay Packers of the league? It's easy to hate people when they are successful, right? Uh, just look at the Packers, look at the Cowboys, look at the New England Patriots, right? It is easy to hate on success. It is hard to root for bad teams or wish ill will on bad teams because there are because they are already bad. When you hate on good teams, it's just it is what is easy, right? It is easy to try to bring somebody down and to bring them up and. I think that's why ultimately a lot of people hate the Kansas City Chiefs. They dislike the the refs and the uh, Taylor, the left or the right tackle. You know, he always falls starts. Well, watch games. Every tackle is doing that right now. Every tackle in the NFL is jumping the snap just a half a second, just that little smidgen. Until one person gets called, people are going to keep pushing it. They keep pushing it. They keep pushing it. But it gets exposed because it is the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're winning, and they're on a lot of TV, which it was surprising that they did not get bumped to a primetime slot when they played the Broncos. I thought the Broncos were a really, really good, good team, but that's besides the point. I think they just get ridiculed because it's easy at the end of the day. Donnie, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, my thoughts are um, I thought the Chiefs had the best team in the NFL until Sunday. Until Sunday night, until I witnessed 
that game against the Houston Texans. That was a game on my schedule that I had a loss because they had Diggs, they had Nico, they had this one. They had several players that were going to play, right? Well, we have Hutch gone too, so it kind of needs a wash. But in Houston, a uh, hostile environment, I felt that would be a game just like it was, close, uh, and we would ultimately probably lose it. So that was one, but we didn't. And to be down by two scores, 16 points in the first half, just like we were up by 17 against San Francisco, and then we took it easy going into the third quarter, Texans sort of did the same thing. First play, what, what was a pick? Interception? Jumped on just like that. I just feel that that performance alone is going to carry this team further than most people think. Uh, it's just that you got to play on all sides of the ball. How many times do you see a quarterback throw five interceptions? Now, three, one was a tip, one was a really a fumble that ended up being an uh, interception, and then one was a Hail Mary. He still threw five interceptions regardless. But how many times do you see a guy throw five interceptions and you still go out there and you bust your ass and you win this game? He didn't get enough credit, I don't feel, at the end of this game. It was like, oh, Jared Goff sucked. Jared Goff, this. he still took this team down the field, connected with Brown, connected with who else did he connect with? Um, Monty there? Or was it uh, Gibbs a few times? They, they, he willed that team to a victory. And this defense, oh, man, let's not even go there. <laughs> I, I don't feel the Kansas City offense – this defense is special, man. And after losing Hutch, I was scared. I was concerned. You, Buck, said that we should trade uh, James Houston, which I'm glad we didn't because I believe James Houston is going to learn a lot from Mr. Smith. Yeah. When Zardarius comes out this week, I think he's going to really pick these guys up. I just think we're getting started, man. No disrespect to the Chiefs. They're a great team. But what I've seen Sunday, it's going to be one hell of a Super Bowl, guys. So I believe it was Monday. I had a question on my show. I'm like, does this win for the Detroit Lions catapult them into a Super Bowl? I mean, I thought they were NFC Championship worthy all season long. I thought they were going to be about 11 and 6, maybe 12 and 5 type of season, but I had them going to the NFC Championship game. And I think this grit win, as you had the flag in there, grit up, I th like I believe it is, or like all grit, sure. baby, yeah, like all grit, know, like that game versus the Houston Texans. If they can play like that, they are able to catapult themselves into a Super Bowl. I'm not saying that that is a Super Bowl winning team, but or sorry, game, but but that win showed me a little bit that they can probably beat any team in the NFC. Houston Texans are not a bad team. Yes, they're out with Stephon Diggs, which hurts. Like I like I like I know those stats are not up there, but losing a right. Stephon Diggs hurts the Houston Texans more than what the eyes see. He opens up the field, running, passing, whatever. He opens up he opens up the field. Losing Nico Collins, or he was still out, which I don't know why he was still out, but I digress. My fantasy team hurt from that big time, <laughs> but it is what it is. Not having Nico Collins on that field as well hurt. The Houston Texans in the first half they looked like a Super Bowl team. That team looked like a team, like in the back of my head, I'm thinking like, man, this is a Super Bowl preview, right? And then that second half, they come out and they forget the how to play offense. I don't know what it was. What's a, was it the very first player to say I can play? Boom, interception. I'm like, okay. And I mean, of course, it was a very turnover happy third quarter, but the but the Detroit Lions in that second half showed me that they do have the gut, they 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 do have the goal, the grit to make it into a Super Bowl. Right. And I and I believe also that if it is ultimately if it is Detroit versus Kansas City, which I hope, I hope right. I think the storylines are going to be crazy. You got one team looking for the three P, which right. is awesome. It's never happened before, right, in the NFL history. Then you got one team that's been the punching bag of the NFL for years. For years. And this story started about three years ago when Dan took over, Dan and Brad Holmes. And this is a special team. They aren't just good. They're special. Yep. Yeah. I'd rather, myself, I'd rather play the Kansas City Chiefs because, you know, like 410 days ago, we beat you in Arrowhead on the biggest game the week one on a Thursday, we beat you guys. We beat you guys. Oh, I get it. I get it. You didn't have Travis Kelsey, but 
<laughs> you know, I'd rather play you guys than play the Baltimore Ravens. I think the Baltimore Ravens are a Super Bowl winning team. I just uh, when we went to Baltimore, they just molly whopped us. Uh, I still, you know, I still got a headache from it. My next tour, I can't believe it. But I'd rather play the Kansas City Chiefs than Baltimore Ravens. Talk about it, guys. And I was at that game. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Because you said you would rather play the Kansas City Chiefs. Does that mean you don't have faith that you can beat a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is my Super Bowl pick, or a team like the Baltimore Ravens or the Houston Texans if you were to play them again? Can't, do you not think that you can beat those teams? Or or would you rather, quote, beat the best? Well, you guys are the best right now. You're reigning Super Bowl champions, right? So, right. Right. And you guys go through it every every week, right? The, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best, right? You get 110% of every team's effort just because they want to do a measuring stick. Now, they say, okay, that's something that's building blocks to build on. Now, I beat the reigning two-time NFL champions, and that will carry on their season. But for me, we already beat you. So it's Baltimore that's that just molly whopped us. So I'm more scared of um, Baltimore than I am of uh, the Steelers because the last time we played the Steelers, we tied them. So you're saying that you're scared of the Ravens in the Super Bowl, and that's why you want to play the Kansas City because you think we can. Yeah. That you can yeah, I think we match up better with you guys for sure. Okay. Go ahead, Don. I, I, I just think Lamar is a different animal. And I'll tell you what. You, you have, uh, you have uh, Baltimore's number. I don't know what it is. Is it coaching? Because I think uh, Lamar is just the best quarterback ever. I I, I would love a Steeler, uh, Pittsburgh Steeler, Detroit Lions Super Bowl. Pittsburgh's an hour, hour and a half up the road here. I've got a wife that is a diehard Steeler fan. Oh no! It, it'd be it'd be fire right here in this household. I'm <laughs> telling you right now, man. That family, her family loves the Steelers. No, nah, it would be awesome. I would welcome it. But I think the Chiefs would be a great matchup, and I think the storylines. In my opinion, the storylines would be a little bit better. Baltimore, I went, I drove, uh, what, three or four hours to Baltimore last year just to witness that. Every year, every year under Dan Campbell, it seems like we have one game that is not very good. It's a letdown. Whether it was against Patriots two years ago where we didn't score a point last year in Baltimore, Sunday, this is the difference between this team and the teams prior, the two or three years prior. We, we didn't – that wasn't a letdown. That was a comeback. That was a big comeback. So that's why I feel that we have a team that can get, that can win it all, a team that you can say, hey, that's a team to beat. When you're good on all three phases of the game, I'm going to ride with the Lions, guys. I'm not just a Lions fan. I believe. I'm a believer. Sorry. Um, sorry. Trying to produce and, and do things. <laughs> right. So what do you got going on, Buck? You, you think you're gonna okay? So this is this is my scenario, right? You beat the Bengals by one, right? Last second. Sure. You beat the Falcons by five. Do you have do you have that game like the Detroit Lions where you just blow them out of the sky? That's why I'm saying the Detroit Lions are the best team in the league. I was at the last game against the Titans, and Jared Goff had thirty. 15 yards of offensive passing. The score was 42 to 6. Have you ever seen anything like that? We will hit you offensively, defensively, special teams. We will we will do that. We're we're built different. We're built this way. So you are addressing the Kansas City Chiefs like, oh, they haven't really beat anybody. Blown by anybody out. You haven't blown anybody out. Yeah. Why uh, is that? They, they have beaten the, uh, oh, I'm thinking the Saints by, by double digits, and 13. I think the 49ers by double digits, right? Everybody else has been a single point game. Yep. And that's not the way the Kansas City Chiefs are built to win this season. They are built to manage the game. They're built on defense. They are because they do have one of the best defenses in the NFL. And oh, by the way, Chris Jones hasn't even started playing peak Chris Jones yet. What happens when that man gets his motor running? He only has three sacks on the season, doesn't even lead the lead the team, let alone the like the league. He is going to come on this last half of the season. 
and the defense is going to start shutting down people yet again. So you like you like you keep pointing to oh our offense of the Detroit Lions is so good, our defense is so good, right? Yada yada yada. At the end of the day, it comes down to coaching. Be, just because if you look at the teams evenly, I think the defense of the Detroit Lions got better when they when they traded for like a Smith, right? I like I think once he gets in there and gets acclimated, not against the Jaguars and not against the uh, I th- what do you guys play the Vikings the following week? I think like it, not those two games, but you know, come week fourteen on. Smith is going to be a dog for you guys, and he is going to get acclimated, and he's going to under like understand. But I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs defense over the Detroit Lions defense every day because they've been there, they've done that. They are very, very well coached. I'm not saying Aaron Glenn is a bad coach, but he has not proven that he can you know keep teams under 10 points, 15 points, week after week after week. Spags does that, and the Kansas City Chiefs understand that right now you know what our offense is not very good yes d hop is there but we don't have a true number one guy like yes d hop can become that guy eventually just like rasheed rice did last season and we are managing the game right now the what i think cream hunts averaging 22 catches or 20 22 touches per game running the piss out of the ball we are taking away possessions and that's that's what makes the Kansas City Chiefs so great is they can beat you any way you want to play. You want to play a grind it out game? Okay, we will grind it out. Here is a 10 minute, 18 play drive in for a touchdown. Oh, you want to have a speed race? Xavier, go go down the field. I'll throw it as far as I can. Go get it. Catch the ball and stay in bounds, but go get it. The Kansas City Chiefs can beat you in many many ways, just like the Lions. Don't don't get it twisted. I'm I'm not trying to dog the Lions, but Kansas City Chiefs have been there and done that, and an, an until proven otherwise, I think the Kansas City Chiefs are are them. I got a question for you, Buck. Yeah. Say if it is the Lions and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and we get Hutch back, how big of a difference is that going to make, in your opinion? I, I, Even I, a 75% Hutch. Personally, he's been, what, he, he, he would have been out for what, at that point, or four or five months they're yeah. saying the break was clean they're saying the no artery damage no nerve damage they what? said that there's a possibility well, which which would which would be awesome it would be a great story it would add to your story like, right? mm-hmm. but he won't be in game shape at all yeah. like he'll be healthy maybe for what 12 plays maybe toss before he's like hey i need a break right how effective in those 12, 12 plays would he be and and would it just be like an emotional piece, like like, hey, we got our guy back, like we got our pass rusher back, kind of like what Terrell Terrell Owens did uh, the year that he broke his leg uh, for the Eagles and came back with the NFC Championship ship ship game. I mean, it, it would be a great storyline. It would be awesome to like see him, like, hey, this guy come back from a broken leg in the Super Bowl, but he wouldn't be effective like at all. No game shape, and that defense has been balling out for. 17 or 16 weeks prior to you right <clears throat> being back why why insert another variable right why take uh smith out why take houston out why add that variable? it just it seems pointless i just think the storylines are really good i think we have a lot of different storylines going into that game if it is that game yeah and we're a ways saw, away i know but yeah and i saw somebody said that so Buck is calling the Steelers and Lions in the Super Bowl. Uh, no, I'm calling the 49ers and uh, uh, Steelers. Oh! Point that out there. Oh, damn. So uh, mm. you're you're getting Pacheco back. That's going to help quite a bit. Uh, he, he, he's designated for the 21 day uh, evaluation. Yep. Uh, I, so kind of like what Hutch says. Like you know, we've been using him, using and abusing Hunt. Hunt's getting better week after week after week. Do you insert him as a starting back, or do you maybe find a new role for him, maybe a slot guy? Because our receiving core is gone. Juju's going to be out for who knows how long, like with that hamstring, like like you never know how bad hamstrings are. Hollywood Brown is like is out. D-Hop is the only guy. Xavier Worthy popped his shoulder out. So Pacheco, but might be in a new role. Like an X receiver or a Z receiver. So, 
you know, maybe a third down back. Yeah. I mean, he does run the ball hard, but so does Hunt, right? Like, like they're kind of of the same back, right? But by, by the way, did you guys notice how fat Hunt is? Like, he just looks like a thick individual. Yeah, he's got some weight on him. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my next question for you, too. Um, Jared Goff is breaking records since 1955 now um, with the completion rate, touchdowns. And he also broke a record um, with five interceptions and still winning the game. Now, do you think, who do you think is in the running for MVP for this season? Because usually it is Patrick Mahomes. But do you, is Jared Goff in the conversation now? And I'm going to ask Donnie first. Uh, if he can go out and throw five or six touchdowns this week and kind of combat what he'd done last week, maybe, possibly in the running. But I would say probably Lamar Jackson. You know, going by the stats, uh, I don't think Mahomes' stats line is right there. If we're going to go by wins and losses, then, yeah, throw him up in the MVP race. For stats, you know, I, I don't see it. Uh, I go with Lamar Jackson right now. Uh, so, if it was prior to the Houston game, I was all I was all aboard uh, Jared Goff winning MVP. I, like, I actually thought Jared Goff was the front runner or the of the MVP. If you look at the pr- six – previous weeks right he had more touchdowns and then incomplete pa- pa- passes he was balling out he was on cloud nine he could not do anything wrong those those five interceptions and playing just terrible on prime time tv definitely hurt his odds so i would have to bump him down lamar jackson i see your jack jack jackson right he is he is one of the best regular season quarterbacks out there he is very very hard to stop but there is somebody out there that is balling. There is somebody out there that many people wrote off. They, they wrote off the whole team. This is the team that the Kansas City Chiefs play this week, and that is the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. Josh Allen is the real MVP of the NFL. Let's just be flat out honest. Where would the Buffalo be, Bills be without Josh Allen at the helm? They're sitting at 7-2 seven, seven and two right now. One of the best teams in the, in the AFC, if not the second best team in the AFC, but yet – Nobody's talking about Josh Allen. Start talking about Josh Allen. I think he has like two interceptions on the season, 14 touchdowns. He's He is single-handedly willing that team to win week after week after week. So I see your Lamar Jackson. Jared Goff is definitely in the conversation, but the true MVP is Josh Allen. I'd agree with that. And we, uh, we actually get him on the 15th, uh, December 15th, and that's going to be basically uh, a playoff game. Maybe I don't. I don't think it's going to be a Super Bowl um, preview game. I, I I do think it's going to be Baltimore and myself and Detroit. I I just can't see any teams beating us. Um, we Buck, you uh, we we have uh, the Jaguars coming in the town, and then we go on the road to the Colts, and then the, those uh, you know Chicago Bears come here for Thanksgiving, and then the Packers come here. So we have three games at home after that. So. It's just, it's really looking like we could go, you know, win 15 games and then just not play our starters against Minnesota at the end of the year. Uh, maybe the Bills beat us. I hope not. I I just don't see it. I've never seen a better team, uh, talent wise, all together. Like we got guys on our practice squad that would start on other NFL teams. But here I'm gloating. We talk about it, guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, I, I hate making predictions because nine out of ten times I'm wrong. But if you're looking at the schedule with, what do we have, eight games left? Man. Twelve. Twelve games? <laughs> I thought it was 11, though. Oh, it was 11, yeah. We, we got 11, and then we're Super Bowl champions, right? right? Regular season, we have eight, right? Um, we do have a couple of tough games. You have the we have the 49ers later on in the year on the road. They're going to be fighting for their division, which I, I see Arizona still winning that that division. Uh, but they're also going to be fighting for a playoff spot. There ain't going to be nothing sweeter for the rest of the year, other than us going to San Francisco and putting a dent in their record, possibly knocking them out of the playoff spot. Um, other games, Buffalo is going to be probably by far the hardest one. I would say on the remaining schedule other than the, you know, the division. 
Packers ain't going to be easy. Uh, the Vikings, like you said, that may be a second or third stringer game. So I, I, I'll make a prediction. I'll say we win 15 games. Early in the year, I had us at 13-4. and four. Thanks to Houston the other day, our, our win totals bumped up a little bit. Okay, so I actually just went back and looked at my predictions. I have a playoff predictor thing that I do. You guys should all do that. It's very, very awesome. But I actually had the lines at 11-6 and six this season. And looking at the schedule moving forward, I think I'm going to stand by that because you guys are still 8-1. and one. You are 8-1, and one, but you play a sneaky Jaguars team, a Jaguars team that's coming into Detroit and a Jaguars team that everybody is riding off. The What they have won, what, six games in a row, flying high, right? And you, uh, Donnie, you said it best. The, the Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions always have one of those games where they just blah, right? And yeah. th- th- there is such thing as a hangover. And many teams that play the Detroit Lions, I think every team so far this this NFL season, once they play the Lions, they lose the following week. But maybe the Houston Texans, that blue flu, is going to come over to, to Detroit. And I think the Jaguars are going to upset you guys this week. And then you play a Colts team, a Colts team that is kind of struggling right now. Nobody really thinks what they're going to do, right? I think they they are better with Joe Flacco, but Joe Flacco is playing bad football right now. Let's just be honest. Insert late November, Colts were not playing for much at this point, and insert Anthony Richardson back. We've seen what Bryce Young has done since he got benched. Two-game winning streak in Carolina. Who has ever thought, thought that? You guys could potentially be on a two-game losing streak going into Thanksgiving Day playing the Chicago Bears. And Donnie, correct me if I'm wrong, but when was the last time that the uh, Detroit Lions have won a Thanksgiving Day game? Day game? It's been what five, six years? Possibly it's, six, seven. It's been a minute. Yeah. yeah. And, and you play a Chicago Bears team, brand new offensive coordinator, head coach on the hot seat. Caleb Williams might be benched at this point. Insert Tation Bajan. Watch out, right? No, no film on him. New offensive coordinator, what could happen? And if that three-game losing streak happens, which I don't think it will, but it's a very good possibility that it could happen, that that 11-6 and six record is looking more and more likely because you guys might have the division locked up by week 18. You, you are right and not play anybody versus the Vikings. It might be a mistake because we've seen nobody play week 18, have a bye week, and then lose opening opening playoff game. So we will see. But I would say five losses is not out out of reach. Right on. I don't Anything see Mac Jones beating us. He he best <laughs> he better take some steroids before he comes into Ford Field. Hey, Matt that dude ain't gonna beat us. In Jack in Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence may have signed that two hundred and fifty some odd million dollar deal. Of, I think it's fifty five million dollars like a season. But that dead cap hit that is going to be voided. Once they realize how broken he is, because that shoulder is messed up, they're going to cut him there and he's not going to pass the injury clause and he's going to lose all of that guaranteed money. Insert Mac Jones, insert a lot of draft picks, insert whole new rebuild and insert a new owner because that Sean, 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 Sha- Sha- Khan or whatever his na- name is, he is out. He's terrible at oh, like, like, like just an owner. Jackson Jaguars will be good in about three years. This week, lines by 20. <laughs> Anything else you want, guys want to touch on? Uh, well, bring up my man Jay's calm here. Jay is a huge Detroit Lions fan, and he said, we just had a blah, blah game. Lions are going to be fine. Decker and other people will be back. Jadarius Smith will be playing. I wouldn't anticipate Jadarius Smith making a big impact versus the Jaguars. I think that Jaguars game is going to be – one of those Dan Campbell games where you just forget to show up, right? And, yes, it is a home game, but it's a hangover game. It's the Jaguars, Matt Jones, right? Matt Jones better get some steroids to play. Don't sleep on the Jaguars. The Jaguars' defense is still pretty sneakily good. And if Jared Goff has another three or four interception game, whew, looking at a 13-10 score, and your number one power rankings, see ya. Top five at best. I don't see that happening. That's that's my opinion. (laughs) Well, this was a collaborative uh, um, show. Uh, Thanks to Man Hour, Bucky, Michael, um, 
Donnie, this is our second show together. He's got his podcast equipment all set up. Can we do this every Tuesday? And I'll get, uh, you know, somebody else on, you know, former player or somebody who put you in your place, Buck, because uh, we are going to the Super Bowl. I guarantee you that. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. What? So NFC teams, historically, right, after losing in the NFC Championship game, do not make it to the NFC Championship game, let, let alone the playoffs the following season. Right, we've seen it with the Eagles. We've seen it with the 49ers, the Buccaneers. Uh, it like it dates back like 10, 12, 13 years. Like just like this has been a reliable thing, right? What makes you guys different? Like saying, "Hey, our NFC hangover is not a thing. We're going back there, and we're going to the Super Bowl." What makes you so certain that that is going to happen? The difference is we have Dan Campbell, and those teams don't. Oh. That's my opinion. You know what the difference is? Because uh, it, it, the, the NFL is uh, it's a TV show, right, Buck? So we had almost 800,000 people Are you at the draft. Big? Come on now. No, no, listen to me. Okay. <laughs> okay, we had 800,000 people. We're, we're, we're the new Dallas Cowboys. We're America's team, right? We're not getting those calls we used to get. Do you remember the Calvin Johnson catch? Do you remember the Calvin Johnson yeah. catch? Yeah. Do you remember against Tennessee Titans where – uh, they let him run for a touchdown, but he didn't even touch the ground, and they wouldn't let him challenge it because Jim Schwartz threw the flag. Those things happen to our Detroit Lions all the time. Those things aren't happening anymore. No. Those things aren't happening anymore. We're the darling of the NFL. They like it. We travel. Houston was 40% Lions fans for Sunday Night Football. The ch The culture has changed here. The NFL script likes us now. Before we were going bankrupt, nobody liked us. We were the laughing stock of the league. 2008, we went 0 16. Thank God the Browns did it. So we're not the only ones that did that. But we're not the laughing stock. And this is the brand new lines. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Because I want to also say thank you, Russell and Mike, for uh, letting, us, letting us stream to the um, filling squad. And Do we have any questions to answer? Oh, it's hard. I don't have my glasses on. Oh, okay. There's one right there. No, Guys, come up with a question. Uh, Jay, come up with a question for Buck. I know you get under his nerve. So my man Pepe over here, he he is on the uh, Man Hour YouTube page. He says the Chiefs are 9-0 and and maybe only played one good game. The league better hope the offense doesn't start to, start to uh, click. And honestly – Hepe, I I I hope the Kansas City Chiefs don't offense doesn't start to click till about week 18, right? Week 17, like it did last season, because that's what honestly drove the Kansas City Chiefs to that Super Bowl last season was they were carried by their defense. And you guys, as Detroit Lions fans, I like I like I root for the Lions because spoiler, I work for Ford, so I know a lot of a lot of the Detroit Lions fans. I want them to do well. But that is the problem with the Lions, I think, is like we are seeing these 50-point games, 30-point games, 30-point games, 20-point games, 42-point game. Have they peaked too early, right? Because, like, that is a conversation that needs to happen, right? Because it is all, it is all, it is all about hitting, hitting the playoffs at the right time. Look at the Giants, the year that they snuck in there, right, and they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl being undefeated. The Giants peaked at the right time. They got hot at the right time. Pittsburgh Steelers with with uh, Jerome Bennis back in, what, 2005 or whatever it was, they mm -hmm. snuck into the playoffs, but they peaked at the right time. Are the Lions too hot right now, winning those <laughs> six, seven games in a lot, lot, lot in a row? Are they too hot, and have they peaked too early? That that, that That's the real question. That's uh, that's an easy question because we went uh, zero and six and or one and six, and then all of a sudden we won uh, eight of our last nine games. Spoiler alert: We took the Packers. We went to Green Bay and kicked them out of the freaking goddamn playoffs. But and then last year we went and we went twelve and five. We're still elevating, and now we're even going higher. We only got one loss this year. So you're saying we're we're peaking? We've been peaking for the last two years. Do, do you? I think you've forgotten you have amnesia, Michael, that uh, <laughs> week one, Thursday night football. Do you yeah. remember that? So you got a little uh, bit I, of amnesia, don't you? I believe I was at that game. Uh, I was a little 
I was a little abbreviated, but I like, but I was there. I was cheering, and I definitely saw the final score. Yes, it was a little fuzzy, but I, yeah. but I like I, I, but, but, but that is a serious com- conversation that that teams have to have with, with themselves, like the Buffalo Bills. Did they peak too early? The Baltimore Ravens. We've seen them play terrible the first two weeks. Totally change. Have they peaked too early? I mean, just, that is a conversation that you that you legitimately have to have with yourselves. And if you do go undefeated for the rest of the season, fifteen and one or fifteen and two or whatever, whatever it is, but winning all those games, it wasn't worth it. Sometimes a loss is a good loss, especially week 16, week 17, Christmas Day last season. Thank you, Las Vegas Raiders. Like, you just need that loss to kind of check yourself and like, hey, okay, maybe we aren't so great. Uh, I want to plug my channel. I've had Glover Quinn on. I've had like uh, 10 former players. I also have uh, Ted Rath. He's a 16-year-old, 16-year coach. Remember the guy that would hold Sean McVay? and pull him from the sideline. He comes on every Wednesday. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Detroit Lions News Show on YouTube. I don't have very many subscribers, but uh, I'm always plugging away, and uh, we will be uh, putting that show on there. And it's great. It's great. Go on your TV. Go on your YouTube and subscribe that way because that's the best way to watch it, not on your phone because, you know, screen time is going to kill your eyes and you're going to have glasses like Bucky. Or myself because uh, <laughs> mine's the, my mine's because of CTE. Too many head like like headshots. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Okay. All right, well, let's end the show there. That's good. Forty two minutes. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are. You want to do uh, a shameless plug here? Yeah, you do one. So, guys, here at 9 p.m. East Coast time, I will be doing on my Facebook page and, of course, YouTube page, we're doing the NFL Power Rankings show. So every Tuesday we do a 9 p.m. show, the after-hour show. I have my man Hoffy and Mark D on. We will release the NFL Power Rankings, and they will try to tell me how bad my power rankings are. And I'll tell you how great they are because, spoiler alert, the Kansas City Chiefs are number one. So just the Lions were number one last week, but they come down a little bit. Chiefs will go back up. See, you notice his glasses got a little bit of red tinge in there. It's a yeah. little, little rose colored a little glasses. Bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please subscribe. Love you guys. Yeah. They average 115.4 yards a game. We'll yeah. see. Do a package deal. We will send you James Houston. And you send us Miles Garrett, and we'll send you a first a first round pick as well.